Um, hey. What? Another one? I dropped, it dropped back in the water. Oh my god. Look at this. <laughs> that was a cofish. <laughs> <laughs> this one, like, hey, that was an exciting flurry of activity. Stick around and we'll talk about all the things that we did. One of the things that we did preparing to go out for the tournament is we utilized some substrate information off the DNR maps. And the DNR maps are a, a long forgotten map source, information source for people. But in the spring of the year when smallmouth bass, and there's a lot of them in the systems we're fishing, when they're, when they're spawning or thinking about spawning, um, they're going to be around sand and, you know, gravel sand. But, but sand can be particularly a good spot. And knowing where, where some of that is, it is hard to, to find on some of the best contour maps because they don't have some of the best substrate information. So don't be afraid to check out your DNR map. Looking at this DNR map here I've got pulled up on the screen, you'll see the sand uh, letters on there. And they've drawn some approximations of where those sand bar extents are. And, and those can be very informative when you're going out pre-fishing. The next thing we did is we utilized our side imaging and um, side imaging uh, as you can see in this photo here you can see the beds on the side imaging and what the beds help you do is they help you trace routes you know where did those fish come from or were there points were there was it quick access to deep water that's got some cover and structure the structure being the uh, the actual drop and break and that cover being something on that structure like a log or rocks or a boulder pile something that's going to concentrate those fish before they pull up and, uh, and you know and they'll follow themselves back out the same ways to, to, to their summer patterns and post spawn so uh, one of the keys for us was using a using the substrate map from the DNR using a good contour map to find those flat locations that had pretty close access to, to deep water, steep drops to deep water. And then we use our side imager in those locations to find beds in shallow areas. And, and we were particularly targeting that, that four to five foot range, three to five foot, three to six foot range of water. Uh, because the deeper fish, the, the bigger fish rather, a lot of times will spawn a little bit deeper. And on a clear lake, that can happen in six, seven feet of water. Uh, but on this particular body of water, we saw a lot of it in three to four feet that was way off the bank. Like in this tournament, a lot of, in fact, the, the you know, a lot of people were sight fishing, bed, bed fishing, sight fishing, target fishing. Every stump, rock, dock uh, that had hard bottom near it had a, had, had a bed by it. And there was a line of people in boats going around picking off uh, those locations. And, and we wanted to stay away from that game um, and see if we couldn't uh, find areas that had maybe bigger fish and target them. Uh, so we used our side imager, found them. And then we used our live imaging, our perspective mode that we had spent some time setting up and having the capability to do. And that perspective mode gives us that 135 degree uh, view out the front of the boat or whatever direction you're pointing the trolling motor and allows us to see the beds and see the fish in the beds. And this was critical for us to uh, identify which beds had females on them. And uh, we were able to, to locate some deeper beds, catch bigger males. And the one part that broke down for us due to boat positioning, uh, 20 mile an hour winds, it was a very, very windy day, so boat control was a little bit of an issue. And then haven't perfected yet catching those fish um, using that, that uh, perspective mode other than the males. It was difficult to target the females. You could see the big females on some of the beds. But it was difficult to get them to bite. And if we had to go back and, and do something different, we would spend more time figuring out how not being able to see the bed, how we could uh, actually be able to effectively fish it. And that might be lure choices or techniques or how, you know, we, we've got some work to do there. But, but anyways, uh, it was successful in that we were able to catch a big bag of males that put us in the middle of the pack. So we ended up with five 17-inch uh, 
males, which are the bigger males in the system, there's a lot of 14 inches, 13 and a half to 15 inches, there's a ton of them. So we got on the 17 inch males and those were two and a quarter pound a piece males and ended up with 11 ish pounds and ended up in the middle of the pack. And, and while we didn't finish as high as we wanted to, we learned a ton there about our electronics, how to effectively use side imaging, how to use uh, the live imaging in the perspective mode to, to dial in on the location of where those deeper bedding fish were. Um, and now we're going to work on perfecting how we can present to those fish to, to, to maybe catch, uh, you know, two or three of those females and, you know, two or three of those four pounders, you know, is a six pound upgrade to our 11 pounds and we're in it to win it at that point. So uh, if we can figure that out next time, we'll be good. But wanted to share a little bit about it and also share a little bit of the fun flurry of activity that that uh, Alex and I had on the water. Uh, sharing those kinds of experiences is, is what uh, tournament fishing is, is about for us and for me, spending time with my son and having fun on the water. Uh, and then learning some things in the process. You know, we learned a lot. We're looking forward to a similar setup in a different year uh, when we come back and, and comply some of the things we learned. So thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe and get out fishing.